I'm speaking to an absolutely massive name in Australian sport. It is netballer Sarah Wall. How are you today, Sarah? Really well. How are you guys? Yes, great. Now, tell us about your schooling. Where did it all start off for you? Yeah, so I went to St. Patrick's Primary School in Camperdown and absolutely loved my time at primary school and um, that's probably where the love for netball came and uh, went to school at uh, Mercy Regional College for my uh, up until year 11. Then I needed to move to Melbourne to um, pursue netball and went to Kerry Baptist Grammar in Kew, which uh, was just an amazing experience to go away and, and go to school in Melbourne. Yeah, that's great. Like, was education an important part in reaching and achieving your goals, do you think? Absolutely. Uh, I think at the time I didn't realise how important it was until I got to year eight and I did my knee and had to have a full knee reconstruction. Oh, okay. I had a passion for netball and wanted to play at the elite level and then realised how quickly uh, that could just be taken from you if you know, an injury comes along or a different circumstance. So that was really the time in my life where I put my head down and focused on my schooling and knew that I really had to have a life balance um, in terms of my sport and how committed I was to my schooling and my um, my future growth um, was a huge part of sporting success, I think. And what subjects did you study at school? So I studied, I was really into maths and science, so that was really my stream, although I do love um, art. Um, I also love PE, uh, biology, and I did psychology, which I ended up uh, going to university and doing a minor in psychology as well as exercise science. Oh, that's great. And then, yeah, I finished off doing a teaching degree as well. Well, obviously there are some big challenges at school, and how did you think that you overcame those challenges? Yeah, I mean, the challenges are, you know, are pretty huge, just not only from school, but in after school with friendship groups. And, and I think the biggest thing for me was um, to surround myself with really positive people and, and also always have someone to talk to. Um, my mum was a great support to me and, and my big sister and younger sister uh, and also really close friends. And um, I was really lucky also. I, I always found someone that I, if I needed to help with a certain area, whether it be school or whatever it was, I always picked people that I could go and talk to and, and, and never probably sit back and think, oh, I, you know, someone's not helping me in this situation. It's really about being proactive and, and putting your hand up and talking if, if there is an issue coming up. Well, do you think there was one person that had the biggest impact on your schooling over the years? Yeah, I probably would have to say my mum. And it's it's probably across all, all boards. She reminds me to stop stressing yeah. and overthinking <laughs> things. Um, and sometimes um, we hear that quite often probably from our parents, but... Um, they're a lot older than us and I think they've gone through the life experiences and um, yeah so yeah and I also just think my peers around me I was really um, you know lucky that I had friends that were really driven but just happy and and wanted to get the best out of themselves. Well do you think that you have any um, any ideas of how how did you deal with stress and pressure of being at school? Yeah I probably um, yeah found it that I did overthink things a little bit um, and then it was just self-reminding, you know, just deep breaths, calm down and get organised. And I think um, when I had to move away to boarding school, it really taught me about how I had to balance public transport and um, all those different things and at the same time get to training, get home. But the biggest thing I learned out of doing Year 12 and still doing elite level netball was it can be done if you're organised and if you just take your time and take deep breaths and don't overthink things. And everyone's guilty of, you know, procrastinating and wasting time. And But I think it's also important to know when you have that downtime, you can actually relax and go and have fun with your friends. Yeah, exactly. Well, there, look, there are some kids that do think of leaving school prior to completing their year 12. But what key message do you think you would tell those stu- those students who are thinking of leaving school early? Well, you know, I honestly think that everyone has to be the leader of their own life and know within themselves what they really want to get out of the, their, their life. And I, and I think everyone has different strengths. And I'm not here to say that everyone should do Year 12 and everyone should go to university. But probably the best bit of advice that I was ever given was to just maximise your potential, get the best out of whatever it is that you want to do. And if that means you want to do a trade, you know you have to find out the best way to go about doing that. If you want to be a nurse, 
you have to skip to school, you have to put your head down and ship away until year 12 and then try and get into uni. And another thing that I think is so important for young people to know is there is always a way, even if you don't get your marks, there's always a way to get to where you want to get. And again, it's a matter of asking the right questions, getting the right people to help you. And sometimes if you don't get the marks or you don't get in or you miss a team or you don't end up getting into a course you want, that's not a reason to stop. It's just to find another way. Well, that's the thing. I mean, it is hard at, when you're in year t- nine and year 10 thinking, what do I want to do for the rest of my life and choosing a career at you know that young age? But I mean, was it hard for you to decide? Obviously, you know what career path you wanted to go down, but you are doing a few other things as well. Do you think it was hard to choose um, what career you wanted to go into when you were that young? Yes, it definitely was because I didn't know what I wanted to do. And But one thing I did know is that I needed a plan. And I love working with kids and I love I loved school. So I thought first step, even though maybe I don't want to be a full-time teacher, was to get my teaching degree. And it wasn't, you know, at that time I didn't think I'd be a full-time teacher my whole life. But I think it's always important to just... Um, have an idea and work towards something. It doesn't mean that that's what you're going to do for the rest of your life. But to um, and to not be scared of the fact that change is around the corner and you know through different life experiences, different opportunities pop up. And how do you manage your time? I mean, you're so busy. What can you have? You got any um, any ideas for time management? Um, well, I'm probably somebody that wakes up pretty early in the morning, gets up and does fitness and, and gets my get, gets my day going by feeling fit and healthy, um, then I have a really clear mind. Um, I'm very organised. I make sure um, I do a to-do list the night before um, I get up because I am balancing. Um, I was full-time work running my own company while still playing with Sydney Swift this year and I, that taught me really how to be so organised. Um, for me as well, it's surrounding yourself, again, with really... Um, proactive and, and people that are positive and um, are hard working. So I guess for me, time management is about planning and organising. I think you'll ask anyone, um, if you have a clear idea, you actually have to you stick to those little things and you'd be surprised how much free time you have. Mm. And I mean, besides your family, is, is there a certain person that inspires you to keep going and, and why is that? Yeah, well, I have different um, people in my life that inspire me. Um, my partner, he inspires me through um, his elite sport, but also with his running his business. Um, so there's different people out there that um, I look at a lot of female role models and I, I see how they do things. But again, you have to dictate the journey of your own life. And um, I think one of the biggest things for me was always um, getting your body fit and healthy eating the right foods, fueling yourself and making yourself feel good so you have a clear mind to make the right decisions. And if someone's interested in a career such as yours, what's the best advice that you could give them? So a sporting career, a netball career or a teaching career or even uh, running your own business, um, well, I guess it's about never giving up. And if you really want to put your mind to something, you can do it. Um, And, I mean, most of my journey in all of those career decisions for me haven't been easy and most people that have um, you know traveled an elite journey or um, you know got a career things don't happen easy for them so for me it it is just about um, finding a way to make those goals work for you Um, there's always going to be people in life that tell you you're not good enough or tell you that um, you're not smart enough or tell you you're not physically good enough Um, but it's about you then taking ownership of a few of those things and working hard to get the best out of yourself. Yeah, that's great. And what does the future hold for you, Sarah? Yeah, so I I still will be running Genie Boy and and NetFit, the netball gym class I've brought out, which um, every day I live uh, and work in a job I love. And um, so netball will always be a huge part of my life. Um, Elite level um, is still probably an option next year to play, but... Um, my focus really is uh, back with Jeannie Boy Netfit and also spending a lot of quality time with friends and family. That's great. Thank you so much for joining me today, Sarah. Thank you so much.